Omaha, Nebraska. I'll be there March 29th and 30th at the Funny Bone. Get your tickets now. Columbus, Ohio, I'm headed your way Friday, April 12th and Saturday, April 13th. Get your tickets today. Toledo, Ohio, the Live and Alive tour is headed your way. I'll be there Friday, April 26th and Saturday, April 27th at the Funny Bone. Los Angeles, Sunday, May 12th, I'll be at the Bourbon Room for my show during the Netflix is a Joke Fest. Let's sell this thing out. Miami, Florida, I'm bringing the Live and Alive tour your way. I'll be at the Miami Improv Friday, June 7th and Saturday, June 8th. Get your tickets now. All tickets are available at ryansickler.com. Hey, baby! We're gonna be here all day! We're gonna be here all day, baby! I like this kind of party! Welcome back to The Way Back. I'm Ryan Sickler, ryansickler.com, and all your social media. I'm very excited to have this guest on today. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to The Way Back. Steve-O! Yeah, dude. Thank you for being here, buddy. Hell um, yeah, brother. Please plug, promote everything. I got my bucket list special at stevo.com. It is a wildly messed up multimedia show. It's it's really like what Jackass would never let me do. And uh, I'm thrilled to have broken the law so badly, to have risked my life so seriously, and to have finally filmed fully triple. <laughs> for a comedy special. Never, I was going to say, never before uttered for yeah. anyone's comedy special in the history yeah. of comedy specials. Like, uh, if, you thought, if you thought the bar for crazy could not get higher, you are wrong, and you need to go to stevo.com to see the bucket list. All right. Well, you said you're 49, is that right? 49, man. So we're about the same age. I'm 50, and I was talking to you about um, just growing up, and you said you didn't really, you don't remember this seat too much from these older cars. I don't. I got to admit, man, I had a really privileged upbringing. Yeah, I want to talk about it because um, we know your public life and everything right. that's so wild, but what was your childhood like? What's growing up like? I asked you if you ever lived in a new house. You ever uh, live in a new house? I vaguely remember a new house smell from when I was six years old and we moved to Miami, Florida. I remember I was saying one time my dad took us to, it was a foundation that had been poured and he's like, this is where we're moving. And I was like, where's the rest of the motherfucking house? He's like, they're going to build it. I'm like, what? You don't just move into somebody's house? Right. And I think, I, I don't know if our very, very first house was also new, but I think that might be the only one that um, we ever lived in that was new. We were always moving okay. to an apartment or somebody's other. Right. Uh, but you said you had a privileged upbringing. And, uh, I did. I moved to Miami when I was six years old. Moved to London, England when I was nine years old. Is that right? Why? Because my dad, um, he became a corporate executive for Del Monte canned fruit. Yeah. Great pineapples. The pineapple factory mm -hmm. was in Nairobi, Kenya. Is that right? In Africa, yeah. And um, as uh, the CEO for Del Monte, my dad had to go visit the pineapple factory in Kenya. And um, he uh, scheduled this visit to the pineapple factory to coincide with my uh, week off of school from for spring break. Okay, so he's going to take you to Kenya? <laughs> so, so it was uh, me, my sister, my mom, and my dad off to Kenya to do the obligatory trip to the pineapple factory and um, go on safari. So I remember getting to Kenya and uh, being ushered into a car. I remember it being like a limousine. My dad swears that it wasn't. I've never seen, at that point, never seen like stark poverty. And here I'm ushered into this car and it's just stationary there. And there are these people like clawing at the window, like begging, like, please, you know, like give us some money. Like, and I had just never seen anything like that. And, and I remember like feeling like, what did I ever do to deserve to be in this car as opposed to clawing at it from the outside? You know, like I, I knew very well that I was not a good kid, you know, like, 
my my grades were not good. I was just a constant nightmare. Everything was a problem with me. I was I was just not a good kid. Like I always I was always in trouble, and I was always finding a way to do the wrong thing. And you talking about across the board with your parents and Pretty school, much. sports, yeah. whatever. You were just. I, I, I wouldn't go so far as to say I was a bad or a mean person. I was just incapable of doing the right thing, <laughs> like, you know, for whatever reason. And uh, so, yeah, I just remember, like, it was, you know, and, and that kind of set the tone uh, f for that trip, you know, like, uh, we go to the pineapple factory. And um, it was, I remember it just being like really like muggy, like super hot, like uh, the, the flies everywhere, like, you know, just, like, people were working, they had flies all over them. And I said to my dad, like, dad, like you're the boss, right? Like, how can you let people work in like in, in these conditions? And um, my dad said that the list of people waiting for jobs in the, that pineapple factory was longer than the list of people who had jobs in that pineapple factory. So if anybody didn't like the conditions, they They're could out. get the hell out of there and be replaced by somebody who will work harder. And I remember thinking, man, my dad's a dick. <laughs> 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 That's what you learned on your school vacation. Yeah. But, oh, but, but fast forward to the, the year 2001, and we're filming the second season of Jackass for MTV. Our beloved cameraman, Rick Kosick, you know, the, the mm -hmm. guy with the glasses, the bigger fellow. He goes to uh, Jeff Tremaine, the d jackass director. And he's exasperated. He's frustrated. He says, Jeff, I just worked 14 straight hours filming a national television show and earned less money than if I shot one photo for a skate ad in a skateboard magazine. And Jeff looks and he goes, so go shoot a skate ad. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Go shoot a skate <laughs> ad. And I ad. immediately put it together. It was just that pineapple factory moment. Like, like oh, business yeah. Business is business. I mean, keep in mind, that was the second season. We were getting recognized everywhere. Now, like, anybody would have been stoked to get to film Jackass. You kidding me? You know? Yeah, they'd, give me, they'd be like, give me more. Right, like yeah, uh, give me twenty hours. Right, I mean, and 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 whatever. It's just, it's just crazy. So I think that it was like, wow, you know. So it's not that my dad's a dick. I mean, well, yeah, he is. <laughs> he is, and Jeff Tremaine's definitely a bad person. But uh, but like, it's more just that is the reality of the world, you know. Mm. Like, going rate, right, you know, like capitalistic society supply and demand you know like nobody's gonna pay more than they have to for a service or a product and uh by that measure in this world if you want to, to get ahead you have to make sure that you are not easily replaced by anybody on the list of people who want the job amen you know so let's go back to you getting in trouble all the time as a kid. What sure. Do, what are you doing? What are you into? Are you into fire? What are you into? Loved like fire. <laughs> <laughs> Loved fire. What did you do with fire? Um, I didn't even. I wasn't even old enough to like figure out lighters, I, or I, I don't even know if it matches. But when the when the the ice cream truck came. And you can hear How this. How the fuck are you about to tie <laughs> fire into this story? <laughs> because <laughs> you can hear that ice cream truck with the music, and it's like, yeah, here it comes. It didn't just sell ice cream and, and uh, popsicles. Like It also sold like the roll, the paper rolls of uh caps, caps. yeah red they're, caps yeah like and yeah. this is, they, they, this is nostalgia but they don't have that anymore like no. where you put like like you open it up and like you put in this roll of caps and yet 
You, you pop it and like the little hammer hits the yeah there you yeah. go that's exact yeah, yeah roll caps so my gig was my gig was to uh buy the roll of caps and smash that entire roll with a hammer <laughs> that's what we would do yes, yeah yes. and boom you, you just made a fire yeah. you just made a fire and so then like uh <laughs> I became I became aware that the neighbor across the street had a gas can. Uh, <laughs> you know, and so now I'm like, you know, plopping the the cap on the on a puddle of gas and whacking that thing and now we're have now it's party time. And then I just remember like stacks of newspaper and like, you know, whatever. I never burned anything down like like badly until I was an adult. <laughs> <laughs> you know. On uh, when we were filming the pilot for uh, for for Wild Boys, we were in South Africa. We were at this like really pretty nice like resort with all these cabins, these bungalows. And they, they were like, if you get cold, you know, there's a fireplace. There was this like egg tin can thing with, uh, you know, like an aluminum chimney that was just like a an aluminum pipe that went up. And next to the egg fireplace was a basket full of firewood, and it had these little wax fire starter things. Pontius is in the bedroom doing whatever he was doing at the time. And I'm waiting for him to get done with whatever he was up to in there. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and I'm putting all the firewood in there with the wax wires, fire starters. <clears throat> I did not put anything in that uh, fireplace that was not clearly designated to be in the fireplace. But I did put all of it in the fireplace with all of the wax fire starters, all of the, the logs. When Pontius came out of the bedroom with uh, whoever he was in there with, <laughs> um, that fucking metal chimney, you know, that metal yeah, pipe that going pipe, up yeah. was just glowing bright, <laughs> bright orange. Just glowing bright orange. And like, we were like, ah, this is fucking funny. Cause we're just getting drunk too. Like we're like real drunk. And, uh, you know, like pulling out cigarettes and lighting it off, like at head height, like the where the, the the pipe is and it's glowing orange, just like lighting cigarettes off of it. And we're laughing and drinking and having fun. And then all of a sudden, in the middle of the ceiling, it just pfft, turns out we didn't even know, but there was a fire fully raging above the ceiling. Where the, like the the chin. oh because the heat it, yeah the oh. heat like the where that where that tube that metal tube that was glowing orange went through the ceiling whatever is above the ceiling and like the fiberglass kind of stuff whatever just caught on fire and so like we didn't even know we were just hanging out and the whole thing there's just a raging fire above the ceiling and then like the the center of the ceiling just broke down just the fire collapsed. the fire just broke down and like it was evident that I mean we I remember I ran over to the 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 kitchen I grabbed like a, a pot or, or, or like a pot or a pan and like filled it up with water and tried to throw it and like no nah, that's not gonna work throw water up yeah like that's just not gonna work we're not we're like it was very clear that we were not gonna put out that fire do you get into bed and start checking all your social media apps and all of a sudden 45 minutes have passed if you're a nighttime doom scroller let calm help you form new and healthy bedtime habits this year calm is the number one app for sleep and meditation giving you the power to calm your mind and change your life since self practices are so deeply personal calm strives to provide content that caters to your preferences and needs their meditations range from focuses on anxiety and stress relaxation and focus to building habits and taking care of your physical well-being the calm app puts the tools you need to feel better in your back pocket if you go to calm.com slash way back you'll get a special offer of 40 percent off a calm premium subscription and new content is added every week stress less sleep more and live better with calm for listeners of this show calm is offering an exclusive offer of 40 percent off a calm premium subscription at calm.com slash way back. Go to calm.com slash way back for 40% off unlimited access to calm's entire library. That's calm.com slash way back. 
Shopify has already taken the cash register online, helping millions sell billions around the world. But did you know that Shopify can do the same thing at your retail store? Give your point of sale system a serious upgrade with Shopify. Shopify POS is your command center for your retail store. From accepting payments to managing inventory, Shopify has everything you need to sell in person. Track every sale across your business in one place and know exactly what's in stock. Take payments by smartphone, transform your tablet into a point of sale system, or use Shopify's POS Go Mobile device. Plus, Shopify's award-winning help is there to support your success every step of the way. Do retail right with Shopify. Sign up for a $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash wayback, all lowercase. Go to shopify.com slash wayback to take your retail business to the next level today. Shopify.com slash wayback. Use that lowercase. What we needed to do now at like two or three in the morning, whatever the fuck it was, it was really important that we um, wake up all the people in the attached bungalows because they're not safe. Yeah, they're, <laughs> they're all going to die. So where, I mean, there was like, there was, there, there were a number, like the bus and the bungalows were attached, like, you know, like, so we're like, there was like a, a second story t- t- situation. And so we're just like, everybody out, you know, smashing windows, climbing, you know, like we're like, like bleeding from smashing windows, like the kids, everybody out. We wake up everybody and uh, we saved their lives. Damn, it was that bad. Yeah, and uh, one of the, uh, there was one couple, dude, yeah, it was, it was bad, bad. <laughs> it was really, really bad. And uh, one of the, uh, the, the, there was a couple that we saved, whose lives we saved, who were on their honeymoon at this resort in South Africa, a British couple. And they were both, by trade journalists and they went home and wrote an article in the newspaper about how we saved their lives. They oh, we, that's nice. we they got to make it Steve O <laughs> burn the place down. We we got a, a we literally got a hero article in the like some news I've searched for that article in in recent times and it just doesn't live online. I don't know where that, but but they wrote an article about how we saved their lives from the fire that we started, <laughs> that I started, that I started. And I remember that night, like, I remember that night thinking, man, that sucks, dude, because we've been filming really cool stuff for this pilot, but it's obviously going to go away now. And in the, the lawsuits, like, I was, man, it was just, my future was looking the good. But they, 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 you know, it's going to be the lawsuits and they're, they're, they're like the just everything's just done. I'm done. And uh, somehow, man, the the show still got picked up and there's, not, there's never a lawsuit, nothing like that. And um, and everything was pretty cool. But now the next day, and then the next day, by the way, too, was the filming with the Great White Sharks. And uh, Sharks <clears throat> with an S. Yeah. Well, I guess uh, we only really got in frame. Was this the one where you almost... Jumped off the boat? Yeah, like, and you almost got it might uh, have, bit? Might have been... Uh, no, that was for Jackass the movie. Three. Oh, the movie. Uh, or the movie number two. This might have been the one where we had the sharks jumping out of the water... Like uh, with the fake seals. I don't know. But it's something to do with sharks. If you get done filming with sharks, great day. Come back to the resort. Now everybody's got to uh, like move cabins. And our beloved cameraman, Mark Rackley, is like, hmm, I got a new cabin. I think I'm, I think I'm in cabin number nine. And we're like, no. <laughs> you're, not, <laughs> Was that you're, not, you're not in cabin number nine. That one brings like, oh, yeah, maybe it's cabin number 10. We're like... No, <laughs> and it also wasn't the third cabin he mentioned because we burned all to the ground. We did and to we the burned, ground? Three cabins were Damn. literally burned to the ground. Three, three different cabins. All right, let me ask you this then: You're a Florida kid for a little bit, at least, uh, and you're in the fire. You get? Do you get into fireworks? Fireworks for me was more of a later in life thing. And uh, I got pretty radical with fireworks. <laughs> like uh, artillery <laughs> shells. You're what? 
you know, like the it's called artillery shells, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. where you, uh, you, you know, it's like it's basically like a ball, and it's got a big long green wick, and you you put the ball into a tube, and you light the wick, and then it's like two pops, like one pop like sends the ball all the way up into the sky, and then once it's makes it all the way up into the sky the second pop poof, detonates it and so it makes a whole display in the sky yeah you see the one side has like a little cork thing mm -hmm. i figured out that if uh if, if you just cut the pipe or if you cut the tube just a little bit and then jam the the ball sideways really jam it in there then the first pop doesn't actually propel it anywhere you actually you keep it in one spot so that in that same one spot, the whole display is going to go, go on. Oh, shit. It's not going up. It's going every, out. It's just going it's just, yeah, it's right just, there. It, it's, not, it, it, it's not traveling. <laughs> that it's display, ankle high. That, that, that. That, that display is going. So what does that do in the radius down here that – I mean, like, like the the first time I figured this out was in the middle of my big Fourth of July fireworks party that uh, that I filmed for my first Too Hot for TV DVD, and um, and and Pontius and I like I I, I was like, dude, I'm just gonna put the the artillery shells in the back seat of the car, and I'm gonna drive the car. And just see what happens. Let them fly. I mean, dude, it was pretty rad, dude. Wait, did they stay? Did you open the car so they could fly? Or did you leave the, it? I opened the window. Yeah. And uh, and, and you were in the car while yeah, they were driving going. it. <laughs> and Pontius was in the passenger seat. I couldn't believe Pontius that wanted thing me in you the car. Us was blowing up in the car while yeah. you're driving. And like, like the shell of the the artillery, the actual artillery shell, the shell, mm -hmm. like was. Shrapnel of it was just straight embedded in the roof, in the inside, in the ceiling inside it's the car. Like is this it? Uh, no, nah, this is a more recent one where I tried <laughs> to figure out different ways of uh, containing the firework. Oh shit! Yeah, this is fun. <laughs> oh, <laughs> shit, dude. <That's> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's a pretty gnarly one. In any case, yeah, I like the short answer. Yes, I like fireworks. <laughs> Give me one more story from growing up, from childhood. Uh, like getting in trouble. Okay. Like, this is going to be a dark story that I shouldn't tell. You don't, then don't. <laughs> then don't, dude. Well, no, like what it was, I was like seven. You know, eight tops. So I was in second or third grade. And I was walking home from the, the kid's house down the street. And I'm walking past a group of much older kids. This is when I lived in Miami, Florida. Mm -hmm. Maybe they were like 12, way older than me. And they had a knife. And there was like this frog that they had on the ground. And like, they're like... You know, no, you do. There's like this thing of they're like, uh, you know, do do this thing to the frog. Just walking by, I could tell what was happening, and I don't think I ever even said a word. Like I just walked by and and just like I walked up to these much older kids and the frogs there, and like, and I was just like, I just took the knife from the, the this like older kid, and I just went and just fucking. Just like I stuck that knife like into the ground, like way in the like the handle of the knife. It's your through. origin story, dude. <laughs> Steve you know, Adams like, is your origin story. You you I'm walked not, over, and didn't say a word, and did that. I yeah, because you were terrified they were gonna kick the shit out of you. No, I didn't think they were gonna beat me up or anything like that. I was just like, I was just like, I'm gonna. I I, I know what they're all like, you know. I, I knew what was too. going on, like, and. uh and 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 then I and then I lit. I just buried that knife through the frog into the ground. And then I did. I still didn't say a word. I just just walked. I just kept <laughs> That's walking. fucking serial killer vibes. <laughs> it is. It is. 
And uh, I would have. What did you? Did they ever say anything, or did they just shut up? I don't even remember off? that I ever saw them again. I'd have been scared. I would have made sure we didn't fucking see you. Again. But then again, then. then <laughs> And, and check this out. That's way scarier what you do. <laughs> That's way scarier. But dude, check check this oh. out, dude. Same exact like location. Same exact street. I don't know if this was before or after the frog, but like cor- Coral Gables, like Coral Gables, Miami. Probably walking from the same like kid's house to my house. Same road, same walk, same stretch. And th- you know what? I was on. I was on a bike this time. I wasn't walking. I was. I was on a bike, and I think it was a pink bike. It was a hand me down for my sister, and I was so embarrassed of riding a pink bike. And I'm on the bike, and this van pulls up, straight up creepy van, and uh, dude is just like pacing me, and he's like, "Hey, man." You want to ride? And I'm thinking, this is like, this is like creepy, not cool. And I was like, no, nah, man, I'm good. Like, uh, he's like, dude, easy. We'll put your bike in the van. We'll give you a ride. He's saying we is someone else with I, I think, him? I think, I think, it was oh. a, I think it was a we situation. And I was like, no, dude, like, I'm okay. Like, I only live, like, right there. And, dude, like, this is the same county same time that the kid Adam Walsh. Adam Walsh. Yeah, same I was going to ask you. Same exact time, dude. I just got oh. like gnarly goosebumps, dude. Like, Damn. I, 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 I sit here telling you that there's like certainty that if I got in that van, I'm not here today. And I'm an Adam Walsh story. Yeah. And do you think they may have been the same people? You ever think about that? I genuinely would say that that's probably a probability. Probability. They were the same county. And and They're I don't even questioned. you know what you know what for all I know maybe it was one guy. I can't I can't say with any kind of certain. All I know was it was get in the van. We'll get you know. Do you want to ride? Damn. Get, get in the van and like. I didn't get in the van. You know, like I knew enough to not. You know. I'm glad you didn't get in the van, Steve L. Yeah. I'm glad you're here today. Thank you for doing this. Yeah. And and do you know what? Like whatever. I was a demented kid, some older kids, like uh I wanted to be shocking and and uh badass, you know, like to what I was I'm not telling you that story about the frog because I'm proud of it. It just paints a picture of what I, like what I was like as a kid. Yeah. I was a problematic kid. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, plug plug everything one more time, yeah. please. We'll get I'm you out of here. I'm a problematic adult, too. <laughs> Check it out at steveo.com. The bucket list is really, really gnarly. Thank you, dude. Hey, thank you, bro. Uh, as always, Ryan Sickler on all your social media. Everything's at ryansickler.com. We'll talk to you all next week. Uh-huh.